So, uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, one second. We welcome you all to the Friday's FTP sponsored by Atal. So, let me uh, request uh, Dr. Ravi, Professor, Mechanical Engineering Department, to welcome our today's ex expert, Dr. Pradeep Kumar, sir, Professor Nana University. Please, sir. It's my great honor to me to introduce and welcome today's program, today's session expert speaker, Dr. Pradeep Kumar, sir, who is one of the eminent professor and director, AUFR Institute of CAD CAM, Anna University, Chennai. Sir, we are very grateful to you, sir. In spite of your busy schedule, you accepted our invitation to deliver the expert lecture in today's session, sir. I welcome you, sir. Our expertise area is cryogenic machining technology, FEA, CAD CAM, and additive manufacturing technologies. Sir. So far, SAR produced more than 15 PhD candidates, also published more than 100 journals, international journals with higher impact factor. In fact, I also completed my PhD under the guidance of Pradeep Kumar, sir. I'm really grateful to, sir. Uh, also, also, I welcome our uh, principal and uh, Dr. Uh, Dinagaran, who is a research head, uh, who is uh, supporting uh, for conducting this program in the grand manner. Also, I welcome uh, our administrative officer and uh, mechanical HOD and uh, placement officer, Dean Planning, Dean Research for their uh, support to make this event as a grand success. Also, I thank uh, all the participants, those who have registered this program for this uh, one week FDP program for their uh, interest, uh, what they have shown. Uh, actually, we have received an uh, overwhelming uh, response around uh, 200 participants are registered for this program. I'm sure that after completion of uh, this session, all the participants will enrich their knowledge in the field of additive manufacturing techniques. Once again, I welcome you all for this uh, afternoon session program. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Please, sir, please handle the session, sir. Uh, thank you, Ravi, <coughs> and uh, CET management. Uh, very good afternoon, one and all present here. Hello. Is my voice is audible? Yes, sir. You're audible, sir. Please, you can go ahead, sir. Okay. So I'll start my slide sharing, sir. Okay. So now my screen is visible, sir? Yes, sir. Visible, yes, sir. Visible, sir. <coughs> Uh, very good afternoon, dear participants. Ravi, I want to pay some other will I'm a mute leather pangla. Sir, I want a mute leather set panga. Question session leather car. We have any questions. Uh, last session. time you get a dial interact pronoun, sir. No, okay, Ravi, okay. Uh, yes, sir. In between, we don't have any interaction. No, sir, no interaction. Huh? No interaction, sir. Okay, 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 Ravi, okay. yes, sir. Uh, I am Pradeep Kumar. Uh, professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering, <coughs> College of Engineering, India and University. And also I'm holding additional responsibility of uh, Director, AUFR Institute for CAT CAM, Anna University, Chennai. Uh, what is AUFR? Maybe I'll give you a brief, only one minute talk, okay, I'm not going to take as much time. Uh, AUFR Institute for CAT CAM is that uh, 20 years back, okay, uh, 1996, they started that Institute okay, in CAG campus to support for Indian industries basically in the area of upcoming in the time okay 96 uh, CAT CAM area so we uh, our motto or maybe our okay the main objective is to support that all the industrial activities related to the CAT CAM now we completely changed that okay our objective to the to support for the entire product development 
uh, starting from the concept idea to that uh, rapid prototyping or maybe the turret manufacturing. Uh, this institute okay, they supported most of the industries in, in and around Chennai and also in Tamil Nadu or maybe in India. Uh, we are okay, the having a separate center in nine, 2001 in ISRO. We are the part of the cryogenic engine development for ISRO people. We have a lot of okay, the projects uh, done for CVRD, Bell, and many government institutions, and also the TBS and other okay, the private industries also. Uh, now we are working with the okay, Siemens, Gamesa, Bell, Sarada Electricals, and many people in that uh, industry point of view. We are offering the training only yearly twice, okay, for the CATM area, not we are deviating other areas. We are having a full-fledged uh, the additive manufacturing technology. We invested more than uh, 1.8 crores, or approximately 2 crores for additive manufacturing area. We are the first people okay introduce that uh, rapid prototyping technology in South India. Okay, in education side. Okay, we bought the first mission in South India for that rapid prototyping. Uh, now we have a polyjet printer. It cost almost it's 1.2 crores. And we have a U print, okay, it comes to 60 lakhs, uh, both are started this company. And apart from that, we have other that, uh, five small machines, okay, we have with the working of uh, FDM technology. Uh, this is that, okay, the small background uh, from our AUF Forge Institute for CATCAM. So I'm holding the director post, okay, we are having a good team, okay, do a lot of research and consultancy work related to that. Uh, vibration, noise, and uh, you can just free, you can go to the YouTube, okay, you can see the Siemens Gamesa project, India tallest wind mass system. Last year, we completely, okay, did the project for Siemens Gamesa. India tallest wind mass system, okay, 167 meters height, okay, we did our project. That was an excellent project, okay, now we are working with the Bill people for that uh, one government project also, maybe it may be released on next month. Okay, <clears throat> so why okay the additive manufacturing is uh, the topic is okay the industry 4.0. Uh, why the additive manufacturing is important okay in uh, industry 4.0. The we know that okay the industry 4.0 is that uh, most of the industries are started for implementing that okay the system and basically it's a cyber physical system because you have passed 200 days sorry 300 days. Almost we are attending all the sessions are related to that, okay, the industry 4.0. I'm not going in depth in that industry 4.0. Basically, I'm a manufacturing guy, okay, started make, uh, studied also manufacturing in CEG. I worked in manufacturing, okay, CAT CAM, my project, PhD is also in FEM in manufacturing sector. Uh, but industry 4.0, okay, is a cyber physical system to cooperate profitably aiming to build a smart factories okay that word is uh, you can say that smart factories okay and smart factories means we need okay uh, some of the cyber world is very very important thing okay like as a internet of things or big data analysis or artificial intelligence or many things are very very important that okay the smart factories uh, by industry 4.0 okay the aiming to build a smart factories by redefining the role of uh, humans okay uh, that I visited uh, New Zealand Auckland University in 2009 or 10 maybe okay in that year I saw in Auckland University uh, that people are okay they are in that uh, RP lab okay uh, in that RP lab uh, almost okay 9 to 10 missions that time only one single operator okay that lady that project assistant called as a project assistant she did okay manage the entire okay all the 10 machines okay by only one project assistant only loading and unloading of that material is enough the remaining almost okay post processing work the people have done that okay the component that's all uh, just almost okay 24 into 7 all the machines okay they're working and uh, i saw very small machines that time okay very small machines that fdm technology machines in 2010 okay that cost uh, that time they told that five to six lakhs okay for manufacturing that are very small components but i'll come to that industry 4.0 okay they aiming to build a small factories okay without 
redefining the uh, role of the human assistance just we can see here okay there are the internet of uh, consumers important cloud computing we need internet of things and the big data is okay the analysis is very very important thing but you come to the physical world you come to the physical world we have many things are available nowadays we can go to that any machines okay the latest machines the people are told that internet enabled machines the people are telling that internet enabled machines i saw that okay in exhibition the cnc machine to manufacture the people are telling that so this machine is in uh, iot okay iot enabled machines sir okay iot what are the data okay it's whatever you want you can collect by using the iot technology that okay uh, then it comes to that okay the data analytics you can do many things in that iot technology okay uh, in the physical world okay the people are working in that because we do we should know that okay where that uh, the additive manufacturing plays a major role in that industry 4.0 in the smart factories in the smart factories whether you can go with that unconventional machining technology or you can go with the, any other new technology but here we want to work with that okay the additive technology is the upcoming field okay uh, maybe in future okay the um, uh, uh, 2030 or maybe 25 or some okay the years mid of 30s the almost the machines okay uh, the cnc machines are okay, go, uh, going to replace by that additive manufacturing technology because aeronautical field the people are using the okay the additive manufacturing technology in bengaluru the vipro systems okay the people are working okay in that aeronautical field the additive manufacturing technology you chandrasher okay is working in that uh, that field and many people okay they started with the working of additive manufacturing technology in a different field we can't imagine okay where we are using the additive manufacturing even the food industries the people are working with the additive manufacturing technology even the electrical industry the people are start for working ec department people are started with the working of additive manufacturing technology wherever just we can name it i want to manufacture one toy it's possible okay in, in house itself we can buy a one small machine you can do whatever you want in future okay so everything is a possible by using additive manufacturing technology the people slowly enter into the market okay by usage of the additive manufacturing i saw okay the reason tv in bombay okay the people are uh, company, small shops are started for okay if you want to print your face mask we can do it by using the additive manufacturing technology okay so people were like as a very small shops okay in future like as i want to buy a one pizza okay uh, the small shops in future maybe come to the road side okay the foot printers are available in the market whatever you want size of the foot or size of the okay the pizza size diameter height what ingredient you want just you can select it okay within the 2 minutes or 3 minutes your pizzas are ready in future now that's available in the market of uk and other areas of the people are using the okay the additive manufacturing technology in the 3d footprinters area okay but i'll come to the okay the industry perspective point of view the additive manufacturing is a very very important thing okay because they are asked to give a specific topic that what additive manufacturing the role in that industry 4.0 so therefore okay i'll focus on the overview of that what is additive manufacturing technology almost the 15 years okay we are working with the additive manufacturing technology okay in our cg campus we developed the first machine of fdm technology okay in 2012 itself by the very small machine we spent the cost of only 26000 rupees okay in 2006 sorry 2012 that machines are available in our uh, cg campus uh, the physical part of the smart factories are limited by the capability of existing manufacturing system this makes additive manufacturing as one of the vital role of the industry 4.0 because i told that okay why that additive manufacturing technology is a very very important thing okay uh the additive manufacturing technology concept okay uh, what do you feel you can see the physical product is possible okay nowadays okay what do you feel okay you can just print that additive manufacturing technology okay whatever feel okay i need this component this component that co- earlier you having a lot of restrictions are available okay the design for manufacturing in additive also is there but okay they having lot of restrictions in that 
uh, earlier, okay, the conventional manufacturing technology, but in additive manufacturing technology, whatever you feel, we can see the product. No, see the product, okay. But you can reduce a loss of, or reduce a lot of mass in the component, okay. The people are talking about in design, okay, the topology optimization, generative design concept, okay. Uh, in future, okay, the people are uh, looking at industry guys, okay, only look for that those are expert in generative design or who are expert in topology optimization. I don't want any guys from that, okay, the design. I don't want guys from analysis. I don't want guys from that, okay, manufacturing. So it should be the thorough knowledge in that, okay, the uh, concept of uh, generative design, topology optimization, and additive manufacturing. Everything is integrated, okay, nowadays. So what you feel, you can print the component is a possible in future. Uh, biomedical, we cannot imagine, okay, the application of uh, additive, anyway, I'll give the token okay, a lot of introduction. I'm not going in depth in the, all the areas, okay, but I'll give overview of additive manufacturing technology, how it may be that useful for your research work also. The AM became the key technology for fabricating the customized product uh, due to the ability to create a sophisticated objects with advanced materials. With advanced materials are possible with the I told that what you feel you can print it that advanced shapes also you can do it additive manufacturing currently being used in various industries I told that aeronautical biomedical okay manufacturing food industries you name it okay the industry almost we can use it anywhere the physical part of the smart factories is limited by the capability of the existing manufacturing system i told that okay we want to integrate iot technology and okay the cloud and many things we want to integrate the technologies this makes okay the additive manufacturing is one of the important part in industry 4.0 in industry so the additive manufacturing technology became a key technology by fabricating the customized products due to the ability to create a sophisticated objects with advanced materials with advanced materials like titanium inconel whatever you feel just you can print it composite materials you can print it nowadays the reason printers are printing a composites the ceramic machines okay the 3d printing machines also available in the market uh, this is the okay the uh, what metals or we can use it for additive manufacturing. Uh, almost all the metals is supported for uh, additive technology nowadays, okay. Uh, uh, you want to print a steel, yes. I want to print a stainless steel, yes. I want to print a cobalt base alloys, nickel base alloys, or uh, I want to print a titanium, yes, possible. Nowadays the concept is called as a 4D printing concept. Okay, the, now the technology moved into that. Next direction is called as a 4D printing technology uh, for printing of shape memory alloys, shape memory polymers, piezoelectric metals are printing as a possible, that is, a smart metals are printing as a possible nowadays. And hydraulic and electronics, okay, the technologies are available printing of, uh, you can uh, by using the two nozzle or three nozzle system nowadays. Uh, nowadays, okay, it's possible to by using the printing of two nozzle, three nozzle, one nozzle printer fabricator component, another nozzle fill that, okay, what are the liquid you want inside that component, okay, finally your product is ready, okay, the electronic components also, I want to integrate that, okay, the sensors or what are the electronic components during the printing itself is a possible, nowadays that is called as hydraulics and electronics, so you can multi-material, it's called, it's a multi-material printing, okay, the foreign abroad, the people are a lot of people are working in the multi-material printing areas okay uk i saw we studied in uk also last year uh, <coughs> i saw that people are very much interested the people are working with that okay the multi-material concept uh you know that okay the uh, 3d printed houses available the civil people are okay uh, last week also the srm okay one of the civil department uh, research scholar has approached okay i want to work with that uh, 3d printing of uh, concrete structures or I need your support okay so the in India also the people have started with the working of uh, big houses okay the mission size we cannot imagine that okay big size of missions are 
available you can print the 3d printed houses i'll many i'll show some of the okay the houses okay the 3d printed house also the textile industries okay the fashion technology people are i'll in okay the coming slides okay one video it shows overall okay the application of uh, additive technology uh, textile industries the people are using the additive manufacturing by using a laser exactly perfectly okay it, uh, measure the size by using that laser scans your body entirely that okay the based on the body size you can print that okay the clothes are possible by using that additive technology food printers okay we submitted one proposal to the ministry of food processing technology in delhi okay the almost for one crore project it's in a processing okay for printing of development of 3d food printers okay and whatever you want we can print it by using nowadays possible by using a additive manufacturing technology Uh, this is the small history of the Tokyo, the additive manufacturing technology. Uh, the people are working in uh, 90s, okay. The concept is evaluated, is called as a rapid prototyping. The other names are called as a material accumulated manufacturing, or it's called as a layering technology. Uh, 2000, slowly the people are entered into the market of manufacturing of dyes, okay and directly fabricate the products and the other name is called as a solid free form manufacturing then nowadays in 2010 or 13 slowly the people are entered into the market is called as a additive manufacturing technology it's called as additive manufacturing <coughs> technology okay uh, we can we uh, what is the difference between the rapid prototyping or rapid tooling and what is the rapid or additive manufacturing coming slides okay i'll give the difference between that what is rapid prototyping what is additive manufacturing or what is the rapid tooling also uh, the, i told that okay in uh, 90s okay the rapid prototyping technology was evolved uh, in that industries here i just uh, the, in the design process i shown that secure design process we are using the prototypes only for the design review and the evaluation purpose okay because you are identifying the needs defining the problem modeling by using computers analysis by using computers evaluation by using the computers and we are producing the drawings to the customer but we want to evaluate the product we want to evaluate the product for application of computers to evaluate the product okay so earlier the people are used for the prototype earlier the people are used for the prototype for manufacturing the prototype itself they took a very long time two months three months for development of the prototype itself okay but nowadays okay what happened the prototype and the name is called as a rapid you know rapid is called as a very fast rapid is a very fast Earlier they took for one month for development of prototype and assembly. Okay, the manufacturing lead time increases the product outcome. Okay, is that take a lot of time. But nowadays by using the advent of computers, advent of technology, what people are reported that okay, you can see the product within a one hour, or you can see the product within the six hours or within a day. The Reebok shoe company has reported that okay. Earlier they have tested their golf shoes, okay, or uh, okay, sports for uh, shoes for the sports persons. They took nearly for the one month for the testing. Nowadays, what they are reported that within six hours we will test our first shoes by using additive manufacturing concept. We cannot imagine. We cannot imagine how the people are using the technology. Okay, so by using the additive, we can model it. You can send to the machine. The machine started for printing. Whatever you want, you can just do the post processing. Under the six hours, you can test your product. The reward people are informed. Okay, so the prototype itself, okay, we are reducing a lot of time. Therefore, the manufacturing lead time reduces. The product come to the market is very early. Therefore, you can sell the product into the okay very high price, very high price because nowadays the market is that you can sell the product immediately. The customer need. Oh, this is the okay, the good example of uh, subtractive machining and additive manufacturing process. What is the subtractive machining? Okay, 
for removal of the metal in form of a chips but adding okay just you are adding the layer by layer of the component or you are fabricating the layer of the layer okay the component is called as additive manufacturing generally we know playing cards okay the cards okay you are adding the 10 cards you are adding a 20 cards you are adding a 50 cards okay that concept is called as a additive manufacturing okay one layer is called one card another layer is called another card you are adding a 10 card just we can see the three dimensional component Again, you're adding a 20 cards. Again, you can see the three dimensional component. But in the subtractive manufacturing process, you have a cube is available. Whatever you want, just you can remove them. Okay, the material, the people are reported. Okay, uh, based on the survey, almost 60 to 70 percentage of the metals are wasted in subtractive manufacturing process. But in additive manufacturing process, the wastage of the metal is only less than 5 percentage, less than 5 percentage. Uh, this is the Tokyo, I told that what is that? A is the subtractive manufacturing, uh, just having a materials available, you remove the material, okay, I told that the waste is a huge amount. But uh, material is available in powder form or liquid form or sheet form or any form of okay, material. We are printing a layer by layer. Okay, we are adding the layer by layer of the component. Just you can see the waste. You can see the waste is that only very less amount. Just you can see the one small video, maybe five minutes. Okay, uh, what are the real application? Because the people are thinking that the additive manufacturing only by using for mechanical fail, automobile fail. Okay, but it's a different. Okay, what I told that the previous. Okay, the slides almost it covers the entire. Okay, the area of. Uh, maybe six to maybe maximum of three to four minutes, I think. The video.
Hello. Uh, what is the token? The percentage of uh, I think you are enjoying the video. Okay, I think the video may be given the overall picture uh, where the application of the additive manufacturing technology. The people are thinking that the big components or big automobile or aerospace or okay, the many things, even the time market. Okay, the people are using the 3D printers. Okay, for the real application. Uh, what are the okay the percentage of that uh, people are using in industries in uh, 31 percentage almost is that automobile people next is that consumer products business machines then medical eight percentage academic eight percentage aerospace also eight percentage then government and military applications and others like as a food industries or electronic industries and other people are using only 7 percentage. Uh, prototype, okay, what are the prototype? Uh, generally, I told that in the design strip itself, the first component is called as a prototype. The prototype is used only for the testing purpose. Prototype is only used for the evaluation purpose. It's called as a prototype. 
you are having a difference between the additive manufacturing and the prototype people most of the people are doesn't know rapid prototyping and additive manufacturing both are same no prototype is the first component maybe it is not scalable it is not actual scale you can manufacture the product with the less okay or okay, maybe less size or maybe okay more size or okay it is not actual size then you can assemble it you can check it okay as used only for the functional testing purpose the prototype but additive okay i'll tell you why the additive manufacturing is important uh, by using only that okay the seeing the cad model we cannot only if you are going with only the imagination we can't manufacture the product okay we can't manufacture the product we want to see the product how it may be appear okay nowadays what happened that in uh, ge people and four people what they are reported that okay by the 3d printed components are just given to that vendors okay the vendors they are quoted that less than 30 to 40 percent of what they are quoted earlier what they quoted earlier nowadays okay the people are physical model is given to the tool makers or maybe the vendors or that okay the suppliers they are based on the physical product they can visualize the product okay the rapid prototyping product they are quoted okay 30 to 40 percentage lesser than what people are quoted earlier okay this is a big advantage of prototype and the engineers the design people they'll assemble the product how it may be behave in the real life they can paste the product what are the steps in the daddy team maybe that okay early speaker maybe took us that uh, briefly what are the steps or maybe okay you know most of the faculty members also you know i'm not going to waste uh, as much time uh, there are the anyway you need a 3d model okay you need a 3d model therefore you should be very strong in that uh, modeling technique okay uh, if once if you have created the model then you convert into that STL file format. I will tell only the very easy method. You have a model, just in the software itself available. You go like as a in drawing AutoCAD.dwg. For MS Office, we are saving like as a .doc. Like in software itself, we are having that option is available storing of STL file format. You can store that okay, the file format as a STL. Then we can go with that slicing the component. Okay, I told that. We can't okay subtract if you are not removing the material from the cube or some okay the uh, raw material. We are adding the material. We are adding the layers, 2D layers. We are adding a 2D layer by layer. So therefore, what even we want to cut the component into the slices, slicing. Okay, like as a mango, how we are slicing. Just we can slice the component into the number of layers. Once you have cut that layers then transfer the data to the machine, transfer the data to the machine. Machine will build a material component layer by layer. Machine will build a component layer by layer. We can't use a product as a directly. We can't use a product as a directly. So we need a pre -pro post processing required. At least in powder based process, we want to clean the component. Or FDM or okay, the SLA we need the post curing process required or fdm we will need a removal of the supports we need okay based on the what kind of process we are using we need a post processing is very very important thing then finally you can go with that application okay. uh, application of okay the rp we can't imagine i told that communication tool maker input tooling application testing of styling you saw the video also Nowadays, okay, the people are using in the cinema industries also. Uh, Hollywood people are using the 3D printing printed components, okay, as a base for their cinemas. Uh, this will, okay, gives overall idea about that RP process. Uh, we need input. I told that the input is a CAD model. The input is a CAD model. The input is a two types. The input is a two types. One is that you can develop a new product. People are always thinking for the development of new product. You just create a solid model. You slice it or you convert it here. You slice it, send to the machine. This is the one method. And the other method, okay, is called as a reverse engineering concept. The reverse engineering concept. 
What is the reverse engineering concept? I have a physical model is available. I have a physical model is available. I want to print the component. I want to print the component. Okay. For example, the bioprinting technology is that reverse engineering process basically. Okay. I want to print a human heart. What can I do? We can't design the heart. We can't design the heart. Okay. Uh, therefore, what happened by using that CT scan device? I just I scan the heart. The output of the heart is a DICAM file. Okay, that is nothing but it's a collection of data. It's nothing but it's a collection of data of the heart. Then transfer all the cloud points to the system. Okay, then you convert into the solid model. That is another method. The reverse engineering, okay, we can use it in almost all the areas. Suppose I feel I want to duplicate the product. Okay, one customer is there. I feel I want to duplicate the product. What can I do? The customer product is readily available by using a CMM or laser scanning devices. Okay, the reverse engineering is a big area. We can't, okay. Uh, laser devices available, many, okay. Illumination techniques and many techniques are available for reverse engineering. You just you collect the data. From the collected data, okay, you, you can collect the cloud points. From the cloud points, you can convert into the solid model. These are the two types of, okay, input, okay, to the RP system or RDP manufacturing system. One is that we want to create always as a new model. Second one is that from the physical product, by using a reverse engineering concept, you create a model. That is called as a second method. Okay. This will almost gives overall idea about that, okay, the entire process. The what kind of material we are using? There are the mainly we are using a liquid based process, solid based process, or powder based process. Okay. The liquid bed is used as a material for converting that, okay, the solid part. And another one is the laminate sheets or wires you can use it. That is called as a solid concept, okay. Solid, the materials are available in the form of a solid. Maybe it's a laminate form or it may be a, okay, wire form. Or the metal is available in the form of a powder, okay. By the, like as a centering process, like as a centering process, we are just fabricating the layer by layer. It's called as a powder based technology. Okay, then the method, okay, each process may be varying. The liquid is called as a photo curing technique. Powder is called as that, okay, uh, melting and uh, melting uh, like as a sintering technology. Okay, and uh, lamination, laminated sheets, okay, almost is a melted and solidifying concept is called as a uh, solid based technology like as a FDM or laminate sheets, okay, the people are using. And applications, we cannot imagine, you saw the video, okay. You can use it for almost all the area, okay. Wherever you're developing or just you're manufacturing the product like as a toy market or aero industry or okay, the automobile industry or new missionary industries, wherever you feel just we can use the technology of additive technology. Uh, these are the people are used for the architectural industries. Okay, uh, they are completely built by using the 3D printer concept. Okay, before building that, okay, how you are building or that, okay, the architect the building may be up here. So everything is done by that, okay, the rapid prototyping concept. Uh, this you can see the chair. Okay, I told that in the video you saw that furniture in future you don't want to go to buy a furniture. You design your own furniture, go to the 3D printed shop, you give, transfer to the CAD model, they'll print and they'll give you, okay. Like similarly, okay, in the 3D printed furniture, you can see, you can, we are using our plastic chairs, okay. In our home is a single layer, is a single layer. You can see there is a multi-layer. These are the manufacturing is a very difficult in plastics, okay. Just you can see the bottom figure, it's a very difficult to fabrication, okay. But in RIT manufacturing process, we can print very easily these kind of structures. I told that in Hollywood, okay, or maybe in cine industries, or many people that are, they are using whatever you want. It's a selective laser sintering process. They have printed the model. Then the post processing method, whatever you want, you can do the coloring. Then just they are kept as it somewhere away that okay in the table. So just they are taking a shooting, okay like as a cine field, okay, the actors, 
they can print then they put it somewhere they fall from that okay mount on something they will take a shoot also and okay the people are doing a lot of things the people are printing the mask also okay people are printing the guns i told that okay the prototype also are used for the millions and many things in that movie figures are printing by using the 3d printing concept the embedded components i told that okay electronic industry people are using the embedded components advanced tooling people they are using with the different materials okay like as a steel copper as a mixer tooling concept they are printing ceramic printers are available in the market even in it manipur i visited in it manipur okay then the ceramic printers are available these are the very small components are printed on our ai fuzzy from small to very big components okay gears and many things we are printer there is that one of the europe company product there is a medical splint okay one of my research scholar has done the work of medical splint the middle one is that the nipple okay uh, savita dentist has given the project that uh, nipple they are applied for the patent uh, left hand side okay the bottom one is a tumor the apollo people they are given they want to print a brain tumor and the right hand side the bottom one is a watch company they are given that okay the transparent case okay they want to fit the missionaries inside how they want to say everything is done by our afg so the middle one is that the nipple we are printed like as a flexible material okay is a real material so now i am going to enter into the directive manufacturing what we seen as a prototyping and everything i told the prototype is a first component okay prototype is a first component for only used for the testing okay but what is the additive manufacturing additive manufacturing is a real component additive manufacturing is a real component it is not its actual scale component okay i want to use a abs material as a one product for electrical industry you print abs material you can use it for the okay in the machinery itself directly you can use the component so the difference of the prototype is that used only for the evaluation and testing purpose is called as a prototype additive manufacturing is nothing but you are printing a actual scale and real component and a functional component and a functional component oh the i told that the process planning is a very very important thing okay we can't uh, say that there is no process planning is Uh, required for additive manufacturing the process planning is also required for the manufacturing but not like as a conventional technique okay uh, the orientation is very very important thing in that uh, 3d printing component okay we are printing layer by layer how to orient the component how to orient the component okay uh, which part is that okay print first for which layer print first then adding the layer by layer okay based on the orientation of the component only we can reduce the time of the printing we can reduce the support material we can reduce the total time of the printing because you know that okay in market the people are charging metal printers are charging the huge amount 30000 40000 rupees in titanium okay so the orientation plays a major role this uh, the based on the orientation only we can reduce the support structures we can't say that there is no uh, need for support structures powder based technology we don't want support structures but if we are going with the sla process or with the lamination process or other process okay fdm process we need a support material okay so the support design is very very important thing but most of the support generation and the orientation is optimized in the software itself just you take the component you can import the component 3d component to the additive tools that software you can go to the orientation option it gives the best orientation and go with the support generation it automatically generate a support generation with the mini or suppose you want to do any manual manual orientation also you can do it okay whatever you want you can do it then you can slice it then tool path generation how to move that okay your nozzle or laser head okay x axis and y axis this the planning is very very important the, the everything is affected by it all the uh, building time entirely okay affected by the building time we can't say that okay the process planning is not required people are imagine that the process planning is not required only 
conventional manufacturing process only the process planning is required no here also you need a process planning what ge okay they conducted one uh, competition okay uh, earlier the weight of the component okay product was 2033 grams titanium metal i think okay but by using the concept of additive manufacturing by using a generative design concept by using a generative design concept one of the okay the student okay uh, kurinavin has printed the component 327 grams only 327 grams only weight was reduced almost as a 84 percentage we can't imagine okay the same application the same okay the real component was printed by using additive manufacturing technology compared to the earlier conventional technologies the gas printed that component okay 84 percentage mass was reduced compared to the conventional method this is the okay you can say huge amount people are telling it manufacturing is a costlier one okay but based on the machining time okay or fabrication time and the reduction of the mass you can show lot of improvement in the reduction of cost so uh, what are the technologies are available in additive maybe another uh, 10 minutes or okay the 15 minutes i'll take what technologies are available in that additive technology with the two two minutes of video small videos also uh, the first one is a photo polymerization technique most of the people are know it's a stereo lithography technology and the energy deposition process okay whether you can use a laser energy most of the thing we are using a laser energy or we are directly you can use the laser energy okay or electron beam process okay our electron beam technology is called as electron beam melting process we are using the okay the laser source as a energy uh, mainly the laser and electron beam plays a major role in that additive manufacturing technology uh, most of the medical implants are printed by using electron beam okay the technology and we having a binder technology available okay uh, then uh, is called as a material jetting technology metal jetting technology or polymer based material just like as a just we can throw the layer by layer okay in the table once formed first layer again you can throw the metal of the okay second layer again you can do the continuous the process and another technology is called as a okay uh, material extrusion technology is called as a fdm technology mostly it's called as a extrusion technology is called as a fdm is a one of the very cheap technology most of the students okay now started for developing a 3d printer 3d printing machines one day the fdm technology because most of the components are available in the market most of the components are available in the market you can just design the fdm machine nowadays less than 10000 to 12000 rupees are possible nowadays but you can do a machine okay but what is the accuracy and other things are very very important thing okay the we are working okay uh, four students are working in additive manufacturing technology under my guidance we are working with the warpage of the component in polymer based technology we are working with the medical implants okay alternate of the titanium okay material uh, coating of the okay the titanium in that uh, polymer based technology and uh, replacement of the okay uh, the metal of the okay the medical implants almost the four students are working in the area of additive field uh this is a sla technique i'll take another i told the 10 to 15 minutes maximum of all the process okay uh sla process is that i told that it's a liquid wet process the metals available on the liquid and then having the uv ray is available the uv rays is moves on the okay the x and y axis uh, i told that you design the component you convert the stm you slice it the data is transferred to the machine this is a common for everything how the machine is working here the metal is all liquid then the head the uv rays are working on the x and y axis according to your uh, shape of the component wherever the uv rays are falls that part is called, that area is converted into the liquid to the solid this is the basic idea about that sla process 
Once the first layer is a formed, the table moves on downward direction. Second layer is a formed, the table moves on downward direction according to the layer thickness. According to the layer thickness. I told that we need a support material. Without support material, we can't design the product. Here you can see I need a one hole, internal hole, or I need like as a ribs or ridges or something. Here also you can use the support material. Once it is a fabricated, just we can remove the support materials. One small video, I think maybe the SLA. It's not okay. 10 minutes or 12 minutes, only two minutes. Only I taken from YouTube. It's very clear. Uh, the next is a LOM process, laminated object manufacturing. Okay, there's a solid based technology. The sheets are okay, The like us, what we are using are okay, the plastic sheets. Only the, I'm giving an example, okay. We're having a two schools out there, one is a supply roll and another one is a take-up school. <coughs> These are the, the very, very okay, the fastest process in RP technology. Uh, here that laser cuts only the periphery of the object, okay. Uh, like as a laminate process uh, for the ones, okay. The first sheet comes to the table, the laser cuts. The second sheet comes over that, okay, the already uh, formed layer. Uh, here the roller is there, the heater roller is there. The roller moves on, okay, the x-axis uh, due to the heat, okay, the lamination takes place. The laser cuts on that shape of the product, x and y axis. This process continues one, this process continues one, okay. The material modeling, everything has the same. Only I'm taking the, the working principle, okay. Once if the layer is formed, the table goes downward direction. The new layer comes over the already formed layer. The roller moves on, okay, the x-axis, heated roller. The lamination takes place, the roller, okay, again the laser beam cuts on, moves on x and y. This process continues one. Again, it formed this technology only used for the models, okay. Till date, the people of the not use the technology for that real application. Only this technology mainly goes to for the prototype application. Many models, okay, the people are used for the LOM technology. Propeller, okay, very fast technology. The FDM, okay, is very important thing, okay. 
uh, this technology I told that wherever you can go, the people are telling additive technology, 3D printing. Only these guys are show the mission of FDM only. Okay, this technology only the people are know they they show the technology. The FDM the fused deposition model, fused deposition model. Here having the extrusion head is available. Okay, the extrusion head is a part of the mission. The extrusion head is a part of the mission. You can see here having two rollers are available. One okay the red color and another one is a blue color. Red color okay the roller used to build a support metal. I told that we need a support metal for the additive manufacturing technology also. But powder based technology not required. But solid based technology and liquid based technology we need a support material. One nozzle used to supply that support material. Blue color okay the roller is used spool is used to used to for uh, building material used for building material. You have any extrusion head is there? Extrusion head is that okay? The material suppose I want to build a material of the part material. The building material comes to the extrusion head. It heat the material. Almost is in as a liquid state. Almost is in a semi-liquid state. Like as a toothpaste. Okay, we are continuously pushing the material through the okay, the extrusion head. Like as a toothpaste opening, the wheels are come out through the nozzle. The nozzle moves on x and y axis. The nozzle moves on x and y axis. Once first layer is over, the table goes downward direction. Okay, these are the nowadays very small heads are available for two thousand, three thousand rupees. Heads are available. You can go to the Amazon or wherever. Then you can build the machines are possible, but accuracy and other things are very very important thing. Okay, I think on small video because it's a very important process. Uh, this is the okay, the 3D piece called as a 3D printer. Okay, uh, this is the technology is again it's a very important thing. Let's it's uh, because this technology okay. Uh, uh, this technology is that a uh, very important thing in the additive technology because most of the okay the SLS process. And other things are based on the 3D printing technology only. Here, having okay, the head is available here. Having a, actually, it's a three-piston process. Okay, I'm going showing only the schematic diagram. 
uh, in the okay i mean the two piston one is a supply piston another one is the build piston supply piston carries the powder particle build piston initially there is a no powder particles available there uh, yeah, the according to the layer thickness the powder fit piston moves upward direction again we have a roller here the roller pushes the middle to the working piston the or building piston the glue okay the liquid adhesive supply supplies that okay the liquid adhesive material okay over the powder particles okay over the powder particles the powder particles are bonding takes place the powder particles are bonding takes place once first layer is formed the table goes downward again the supply metal supply piston moves upward direction the leveling roller pushes the metal to the working area build piston again the liquid supply metal supplies the torque okay, where according to the shape it supplies the torque okay, the liquid adhesive bond so the bonding takes place of the powder particle this process continues one this is called as a 3dp is okay this story okay is very interesting story mr eric okay you uh, have uh, brain size tumor okay this uh, the size of the tumor is that okay in his uh, 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 head so once uh, okay uh, during that okay the tumor he was not okay even eat or drink the water properly so by i told that the reverse engineering concept the people are actually measure the size of the tumor and they remove the tumor they put as the okay the mirror the okay the left hand side okay the so exact size or uh, the what is the three printed component they want to put they scan and they are printed by using the okay the technology then they are operator now eric is eating and drinking water as usual is living the life okay as it is i told that the mask okay is very interesting thing the people are printing the 3d printed mask also uh by the laser scan you can just scan your face entirely once the face was okay the scan uh, that according to the how much layer thickness you want okay you can decide by using a cat system by using the technology of 3d printing just you can print actual okay the uh, face okay the, what you have scanned by using laser you can print it these are possibility of the okay many positives are there also the negative things also there by using this kind of uh, technologies also okay uh, the hearing aids are mostly okay in us the people the report of that 100 percentage of the hearing aids are printed by using additive manufacturing technology additive manufacturing technology uh, recently in japan okay 2014 i think okay uh the japan way was printed a revolver also by using a 3d printer technology now i think he is in a jail okay with the permission of government we can't do anything uh, this is called as a selective laser sending process this is a real additive manufacturing process used for the metal printing process okay again like as a 3dp like as a 3dp okay we having a two piston one is a supply power supply piston and another one is a build piston here we are using a source okay our medium is that laser source is that one of the medium here we are using the left hand side piston initially is in a downward direction and the fabrication piston initially in a upward direction then according to the layer thickness the power supply delivery piston moves upward direction the leveling roller pushes the middle to the working area then the laser beam moves on according to the x and y axis of the component here the metal is that okay the bonding and sintering process takes place okay the metal almost is a melted okay almost is a melted and bonding takes place between the powder particle okay this is called as that you this support for almost all the metals this process is support for sl having a two uh, sl is having a two uh, two types of there one is that used for polymer based technology and another one is used for the metal based technology but this sls technology okay is a very very powerful for metal printing process i think maybe another two minutes video okay i'm not going to take as much time it's a very important thing okay
And another very important thing is that uh, lens technology, okay, this is another big, uh, very, uh, people are used in industries for the metal components, for the metal components, but this process is slightly, okay, uh, opposite to that SLS technology, okay, uh, in SLS technology, the powders are available in a bed, okay, uh, then laser source, okay, falls over the bed according to that, okay, the shape of the component. But here is that the lens process, okay, uh, is very, very important in metal. There is a metal additive manufacturing technology. The people are using the technology for the many medical implants, okay, the people are using. Uh, here having that, okay, the powder delivery system surrounded by that nozzle, surrounded by that, okay, the, the laser source, okay. I think there are the four nozzles are surrounded by that, okay, the uh, laser source. Uh, simultaneously, whatever the powder falls over the bed, and a laser also falls on the powder particle. The laser also falls on the powder particles. Okay. Simultaneously, whatever the falls on the powder by using that. Okay. Any force system or gravity, the powder falls on the table. Uh, the laser source. Okay. Also, the falls on the powder particles. Simultaneously, the powder particles are also also it's a melted. Okay. And the bonding takes place. The metal fusion takes place between the particles. Okay. So this is the basic concept of the lens process. You have in that okay the laser source is available the laser source surrounded by the nozzle okay by the nozzle just we can say powder particles are falls over the table or that uh, already formed layer the laser source okay the simultaneously formed that layer by layer of the powder particles okay this is called as a lens technology it's a one of the very very powerful tool okay in that uh, additive manufacturing technology nowadays one small video okay
the electron beam process okay similar to that electron beam machining we are using for additive manufacturing technology most of the okay the articular cups are manufactured by using electron beam machining process uh, the us has okay the report of that more than 40000 cups are implanted okay uh, in 2010 they reported that nowadays we can't imagine how that okay the people are using the technology for additive manufacturing the rapid tooling okay i told that uh, these are the some process okay i explained okay that what other technologies are available uh, in that uh, additive manufacturing for uh, industry 4.0 uh, the rapid tooling is that okay for you uh, again very very important okay the area in that uh, rapid manufacturing process because that uh, the rapid uh, if you want to manufacture tools okay it will take a very long time the tool design manufacturers or they last for three months four months time okay for design manufacturing we need a edm wire cut cnc many things okay but by using rt manufacturing technology by using the electron beam melting or using the SLS technology or laminated object manufacturing, we can just manufacture a dies or within a three days or four days is a possible. Okay, by earlier the people took a very long time, but nowadays, okay, by manufacturing the dies are very short span, just we can manufacture it. That is called as a rapid tooling. And there are two types of rapid tooling concept one is called as a direct tooling, and another one is called as an indirect tooling. If you are manufacturing the dies or directly, for example, you can see the okay, the Manufacturing of the water bottle injection molding machine or any other process, okay. We need a dies. The dies are directly manufactured, is called as a direct tooling process. Suppose I am using sand casting process, we know sand casting process. The we need a pattern, we need a pattern, maybe plastic or okay, wax or some other patterns are required. So the wax patterns are okay, manufactured by using a additive manufacturing process is called as an indirect tooling by using the pattern we are making a mold then we are pouring a liquid metal that is called as indirect tooling method but in direct tooling method the tools are directly fabricated is called as a direct tooling method this is called as a direct tooling method having a die is available just you can pour the liquid okay then you can melt it uh, just pour it then the, you can just take a component from the mold is called as a direct tooling this is called as a indirect tooling i told that okay for Manufacturing the pattern first, manufacturing the pattern by using the pattern, just we can prepare a sand molding process, then you can pair up for a liquid metal or something. Okay, this is called as an indirect or maybe indirect tooling method. These are the direct tooling method. This is indirect tooling method. Uh, indirect tooling method used for making a component steel mold. Some of the products, okay, the people are using 3D printed components in automobile. I have, okay, I'll take another one hour also, but the time is also restricted, okay. Uh, this is that, okay, the motorcycle mirror in future, okay. Suppose having a small machine is available within your home. Uh, just a side mirror or something was broken don't go to the shop you can download from the google solid model then send to the machine you can just print it then you can fix it very low cost okay one of our professor okay having an audi car he was asked that okay sir one plastic component was broken the people are asking sixty thousand rupees where it is possible to print by using our technology of additive manufacturing i told them yes we printed the component also this is that okay the range of automobile technology you can print n number of components in additive this is sls relative laser sinting technology functional component this is additive manufacturing this is a full color textured components also they are printed this is that okay the functional alternative bracket was printed by using the additive technology this is that okay the Knuckle design, okay, they're printed by using, these are the we need, uh, topology optimization and the generative design concept. We can reduce a lot of mass, we can reduce a lot of mass. What people are reported, are reported by using additive technology. EOS Corporation has reported 35% lighter than original design and rigidity was improved to 20%. Okay. 
these are the g has invested huge amount okay like as our cnc machine shop g has okay put nearly 300 uh, machines are okay the it manufacturing machine in their line production shop the report of the part consolidation okay uh, we print out in our AFG 30 components are print out into the only one part okay the third uh, the part consolidation is a very very important thing in additive manufacturing functionality improved cost was reduced 30 percentage okay and the mass is also okay you can reduce it automotive component we cannot imagine bmw people are using rolls royce people are using but having a huge scope available in automobile field okay having a open doors for the new design cleaner lighter and safer products the one word is very important thing shorter lead time that's very important thing. with the lower cost we can manufacture by using a additive manufacturing i'll move to that okay the time was restricted therefore okay i'll move to the bio additive manufacturing <coughs> i told that in future okay nobody is going to wait for organs now people have started for printing the human organs you cannot imagine the 3D printers are available. There's a biofab printers are available. Okay, I need heart, I need kidney, I need okay, uh, any organ for the human being is possible. I need a one liver is possible in future. One of my scholars working in okay, uh, in US, okay, Johnson Company, Pradeep, okay, he did his undergraduate project, my okay, my guidance. Then he went to US and he completed both. Uh, post graduation years now he's working in a johnson company uh, last okay year he came to india and we met and we discussed he's working in okay the printing of the hearts printing of the real hearts uh, we are in lot of okay the mismatch in that okay uh, the organs for human being okay if any failure occurs now you can just print your human organs okay in features are very very easy very very easy maybe 2030 or 2040 50 something you need not wait for any human organ, like as a reverse engineering, you collect the scale, CD scan data, from the scanned data, you can slice it, transfer to the machine, okay, the cells are there, stem cells are there, you can just grow, grow the stem cells, it exactly matches your body, then you can print it, then you fit it. So the bioprinting is that helps constructing a living human tissues and organs. Printing of living human tissues and organs. Organ like liver, kidney, bone, wall, even heart also printing is possible. There are a lot of research going on in abroad. These are the 3D printing, okay, the concept. I told them you collect the data from that CT scan data. There's a reverse engineering. Convert into the solid model, slide set, slice the data. You can send to the printer head. Okay, the cells is available like as that. Okay, uh, powder particle like as the cells are available. Just you can print a one layer, then you can apply the bio paper. Bio paper gives that okay life. Okay, to the cells. Okay, because it's uh, in which the proteins and other things. Okay, then each layer you can use a bio paper also. Finally, you can keep into the incubator. Just you can maintain that. Okay, for the live cells or live organs. What are the components needed for bioprinting? You need a cells, bio ink, you need a bio paper, just to keep the, okay, the cells are live. Then you need a bio plotter. It comes to the seven crores, okay. This machine is available in the market, seven crores. I told that, okay, source of bio ink is very important. Source from the patient or stem cells. Uh, by using that, you can grow it, okay, by using a standard method, then you can culture it, then you can put it on that, okay, the nozzle, okay, like as a capsules, you can just use it, collect it, then by using that, okay, for that live, we need a food, water, and oxygen to survive the cells, so that is called as a bio paper. I think one small video for another two minutes. <laughs> Bioprinting related.
uh, what are the current progress in bioprinting the people are printed yes queensland university australia people are started for printing kidneys blood vessels okay and many things are there started for printing uh, ravi time mudinchengla ravi la or i can continue for another 10 minutes uh, yes sir we, uh, we can we can make it or i can continue for another 10 minutes maximum or time yes, is over means i'll stop yes sir uh, time up sir another 10 uh, minutes it's okay sir we'll wind up okay okay yes sir uh the next is uh, the i told that the, 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 the 4d printing is a very latest technology uh 3d printing okay maybe in going to absolutely in future uh, now started for using the smart materials okay the smart materials okay they used for 4d printing technology uh this is like uh, similar to the 2d printing by the application of heat or any other external agents okay it can transfer into the three dimensional shape automatically that is called as a 4d printing it's one of the powerful tool the people have started for a lot of research and uh, in 2017 okay so many papers related to the 4d printing also now the people are lot of people are working in the smart materials on that okay the 4d printing concept uh, 1d 2d we know what is the 3d and 4d what is the 4d printing 4d printing process which is a 3d printed object transforms itself into the another structure over the influence of the external energy by using temperature i told that light or any other environmental factors okay uh, 3d printing uh, based on the 2d we are adding the layer by layer 4d also we are using the smart materials we are using a smart materials okay by developing a intelligent structures by developing a intelligent structures how we just we can say that okay my theory uh maybe that small video okay helpful to just what is 4d printing uh these are my some of the student okay i did in the post graduate courses we did for medical splint okay for the uh, uh, hospitals uh, for my pg students uh, this is optimum optimize splint okay we are did for one of our student akshaya okay the pg student uh these are the conventional method by using the mold you can manufacture that okay the splint then it will take a very long time okay we are used that to the additive manufacturing technology by using the software of 3d slicer blender mesh mixer and tura the softwares are used for that okay from the ct scan data is okay we are printed our own components and also we are optimized that okay the medical splints okay uh, based on the three shapes we are optimized uh, 
okay uh, what compared to the traditional method by additive manufacturing component method the cost okay almost the 70 percent this is our own project comparatively it's uh, reduced by the 70 percentage of the cost design you can allow whatever feel we can just design it quality okay it's a very light okay we, and uh, wastage i told that 70 percentage is that less and the speed only it's a very less time taken for uh, additive manufacture the printing process these are the tokyo okay, we printed with the different metals of pl and pt eg also we are where, where which material is that exactly fitted for the medicals okay dental splints also so only we took that manufacturing time okay only for uh, less than 20 to 30 minutes only you can see the both the diagram of the pla and okay the PTEG with the different uh, component with the different okay the topology optimized component the cost we can see the medical people are they are asking 2000 3000 but we spend only the maximum of 120 rupees maximum something we spend for 200 rupees okay that's all the total cost of the medical spend we spend only that okay with the different metals also we spend maximum of that pla is the 230 with the bigger size okay the optimum size spend we spend only that 112 or 114 rupees only okay these are the fe analysis also we did for the medical spend or during that okay the hole making uh, whether it withstand the stress or anything that also we have done that okay the fe analysis with the different models okay but everything is very fine okay and the roughness also we have tested out is very good exactly matches with the medical spin by using a conventional method and another very interesting work one of my student okay did the master degree uh, now he's working in, uh, in fe a company okay that level uh, the doctors their approach is that uh, we know we want to uh print a tumor exactly in the brain tumor before going for the operation we want to print a, we want to see what is the size of the tumor what is the shape of the tumor and how to do that operation there is a pre-processing pre-processing okay uh, pre-method okay how to do the operation the doctors were requested uh, we need okay that uh, tumors okay where it located what is the size of the tumor that may be very helpful for that okay uh, the operation uh, one of my PG scholar, we, we did the work and nearly again six, seven students are undergraduate students are working in medical field of my students. So we collected the data from the CT scan data, then we segmented, we data processed, we inspected, machine, and we oriented, and finally we have checked that where is the stress, okay, the maximum, everything, FE analysis, finally we have printed the common, I'll show some of the structures, okay. Uh, this is the uh, from the CT scan data. We are collected the data from the collected data. We are exactly identified the, where is the tumor on that. Okay, the skull. Then we our mesh refinement was done by using the software. Then this is that uh, cut section view of that. Okay, the where is it exactly the tumor was. This is that very very helpful for that doctors do the pre operation. Sorry, uh, pre planning of the operation. This is the actually size of the tumor. Okay, we are used for MRI scan data, tumor segmented, then mystery refinement, then we are exactly extracted the tumor from that. Okay. This is the okay, the actual size of the tumor. This is a printed tumor. Okay, just you can see the figure. Okay, the skull where it located, what is the size of the tumor? Again, we are printing the complete solid tumor. The cost is a very high in additive manufacturing machine. So therefore, we are okay. The tumor suffer uh, was we are printed with that okay. The modified shape of shape means okay. The same shape with the different okay. The hollow structures we are printed. Uh, the hollow uh, fold okay. We spend only the thousand five hundred rupees cost, including the skull and the tumor. Okay, complete solid model we are printed almost three thousand two hundred hours. Sorry, three thousand two hundred uh, rupees. The time taken for the because only for the operation planning only we need not require for solid component. Therefore, we are planned for that okay the hollow component okay or hollow tumor. We that cost is only we spend thousand five hundred rupees. Okay, it's a very 
helpful for the medical industries. We now we are printing for that. Okay, liver. One of our scholar was printed liver uh, for that. Again, the tumor in the liver. Many things we are working with the with the help of my students. Uh, I think okay. I'll stop after this topic uh, because the time is already. Uh, thank you very much, Ravi. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, thank you very much for your uh, valuable lecture, sir. Also, excellent presentation. That uh, uh, live uh, real-time uh, video clip you have shown, sir. We are all really enjoyed with uh, bio printing. Even uh, 4D technology also you have uh, uh, given explanation, sir. We are enjoyed uh, with your Even presentation. Even only introduction, that's all. Okay, I'm yes, not going yes, in depth. <laughs> <laughs> Our uh, all the participants, uh, they might have enjoyed with your uh, uh, lecture, sir. Really, we are very happy. So today is a uh, uh, learning day for all of us, sir. Uh, we are very thankful to you, sir. It's a very opportunity, fortunate for attending your uh, lecture, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Once again, I thank. Uh, our uh, research head, uh, Dr. Dhanagaran, uh, who is uh, providing uh, support and help for to make this event as a grand success. Also, I thank uh, our principal, our uh, mechanical HOD, for providing moral support uh, to conduct this program. Also, uh, my colleagues and other professors in the department. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Professor Dhanagaran, sir. sir. Thank you so much. Uh, any questions from the participants? Uh, participants, you can uh, throw your question in the chat box. Yes, you, you can uh, raise your hands. You will be able to interact with me, sir. No problem, sir. Okay, sir. No, no questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir, thank you very much, sir. Kindly, uh, okay, participants, kindly fill your attendance. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you, sir. Uh, I leave the meeting, huh? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.